Well, that's cooking away nicely there. Um, as you saw, I got the fire going using the flint and steel. Some natural materials that I found around, dried grass, a bit of uh, dried bracken, which was uh, which is fern. A little bit tricky, went up a bit faster than I thought, and then uh, getting the sticks in there and that. I actually almost thought it went out there, but it didn't. I managed to keep it going. Cutlery holder, a little bit tricky to cook with. Um, well, no, actually it's not. It's okay. I've just got to lift up the pot and put wood in. It sort of ebbs and flows. It, it, it sort of dies down a wee bit and then burns really hot. But I uh, seem to have put the right thickness wood in. Burns a bit longer and uh, gives a nice more even heat. So that I can hear that bubbling away. Um, as you saw, I used three ingredients. Cabbage, potato and some smoked sausage. Uh, spicy smoked sausage. And, you know, this is a hobo stew. A hobo was basically a, like a homeless person who uh, travelled around looking for work. And uh, I think there were uh, migrant workers, that was the sort of term. We know that they travelled around on the freight trains. Uh, no doubt there was a lot of walking involved as well, or any way that they could get around. They would do so to find work. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty hard lifestyle, I think, that they would have had. Um, you would have worked for good people, you would have worked for bad people. And uh, the bad person gives you the cabbage, the good person gives you some nice smoked sausage. So, I think pay was low. You know, they were classed as unskilled labourers. Um, but uh, sometimes they may have been paid in food. Um, the potato could have been stolen. A hobo stew, there isn't one type of stew that defines it. Um, it really is a combination of many things, what you can get your hands on. The three ingredients that come up as I've been researching this has been uh, a meat element, a veg element and a potato element. So I've got the veg, the cabbage, I've got the potato and the meat element was the smoked sausage and I, I sort of imagine that if um, Somebody offered me some chicken, some mince, or some smoked sausage. I'd opt for the smoked sausage because you could travel around in a group, a group of hobos, or you could be on your own. A group would have more resources available to them. Uh, they would have um, someone might have some salt, someone might have a pot, someone might have uh, some pepper, some oil. For me, traveling by myself, uh, I can never put my myself in the shoes of a hobo. Uh, I can only just take some guesswork here. You know, I've woken up this morning, I've, I've, I've been sleeping in a nice bed, and uh, I've had toilet facilities. I've been able to put the kettle on. I've been able to uh, put some toast in, have some breakfast, and I've put some nice clean clothes on. So that's great, but for them, traveling cross country, looking for work, uh, pretty rough lifestyle. Yeah, you know, it's hard. So the, the meat element that I chose today was the smoked sausage because it's got salt in it, pepper in it, it's got the oils in it, you saw me fry it off, the oils came out, and um, it's got the flavour in there, uh, it was spicy sausage, so you know that's going to flavour my stew. Mince and chicken, had I been offered that, I don't, I don't know, you know, uh, it definitely needs cooked for chicken, you could eat raw mince if you want, but uh, I think the smoked sausage you can actually cut a bit off and, and eat as well. And I think the nutritious value from the fattiness of it uh, is quite important, not to mention that it will flavour my stew. So, three ingredient hobo stew cooked on the cutlery holder. Uh, I know I'm not the, the best at what I do here, but I just wanted to try this and see how it worked out. Oh, I think it's okay. So I think that's probably going to be another 10 minutes, and then uh, I'll try it, see how it goes. Oh, that looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see the colour of that. That's all cooked down pretty nicely. It is really uh, flavoursome, to be honest. Uh, the cabbage I can taste and the potato but that sausage has really given it everything I wanted it to have. If I just used mince today, it would be pretty, uh, pretty bland. 
That's great. That's worked a treat, that cutlery holder, to be honest. And I wanted to contain the fire. Um, I had a cup of tea on there first so that I got a good sort of bed of coals and embers on there so that I could control this a lot easier by adding small sticks and medium sized sticks in there and keep it burning away. Well, that was a rather nice lunch. Uh, just as an afterthought actually, you can see I've got my bag on my back here, it's quite heavy and uh, we've all seen the pictures I guess, you know, where they, you have a bindle and that's a stick with the cloth at the back there that you could carry your gear around in and uh, that might just be a, a stereotype of a hobo or they genuinely did have that or some did anyway and uh, it makes you think because uh, what I do today when I come out here um, I do as a novelty but for them living and cooking the way that they did was a necessity and uh, now I know that I've got my my blackened pans you know because the fire can can blacken them I've got them tucked away in a plastic bag uh, in my bag so nothing gets dirty and I would imagine if you had a bindle it'd be quite difficult because heavy rain you know it's cloth material everything would get wet it would get dirty the cloth you know using all the uh, pots and pans and things and then I get to go home right now and wash everything and uh, get in trouble because I dirty the sponge but you know <laughs> but I, I don't know you know I assume if they got some work they'd be in a place for a week a month uh, perhaps more and you know there would be washing facilities there for them but if you were on the road it's not so easy you know so you'd have to carry all these little extra kind of things well I wonder how much stuff you'd actually have to carry because this is really heavy this is just one outdoor cook. Anyway, afterthoughts. Thanks for watching. See you next time.